Hey my friends, uh, today we're talking about IM injections versus sub-Q injections. The age-old debate. It's like people debate over this almost as much as AIs. Now there's benefits and drawbacks to both, right? Antimuscular injections or subcutaneous injections where you're injecting into your fat or between your skin and your muscle in the lipid layer. Now I have a demonstration on how to do a subcutaneous injection on my channel if you want to watch that. But I'm going to give you the pros and cons of each so you can make a wise decision for yourself on which one to start with if you're just starting on TRT or maybe if you want to make a switch. Um, and then there's a little bit of really important information you need to know if you're switching from one to the other. If you started on sub-Q and then later decide you don't want to do it anymore and you want to switch to intramuscular, I've got a bit of information that you really want to know. So stick around for that little bit towards the end. Okay, so some things to consider. Oil and water don't mix, right? If you poured water into a glass and then poured some oil in it, the oil would sit on top of the water and they wouldn't mix. The same thing happens when you inject uh, an oily based substance like testosterone oil into a watery environment like your muscle tissue, which consists of approximately 76% water. So they don't mix, they repel each other. And so the water repels the oil and the oil is quickly swept up into the bloodstream uh, through the capillaries. Now, the opposite is true if you inject oil into an oily environment, such as your fat. So when you inject testosterone oil into your fat, into your lipid layer, it stays there for a much longer, it mixes with your fat and stays there for a much longer period of time um, and absorbs much more slowly. So this doesn't mean it doesn't get absorbed, it just absorbs much more slowly, uh, pro possibly prolonging its half-life significantly. Now, we don't know exactly how long um, it could pro pro potentially prolong the half-life. So despite this rule of oil and water not mixing in that, you know, uh, testosterone is generally intended for intramuscular use, people have taken a liking to injecting subcutaneously due to its ease and potential to de decrease estrogen-related side effects. Um, and I'll get into that here with the benefits and drawbacks of each. So starting with sub-Q injections, um, the first benefit and probably the most purported benefit of sub-Q injections is that it has a much slower absorption, like I briefly mentioned before. This could potentially lead to more stable hormone levels across the week, which could possibly decrease the presentation of estrogen-related side effects. Again, this is the primary purported benefit of sub-Q injections. Um, generally speaking, a slower absorption just means a longer half-life, right? It takes a lot longer for the um, testosterone to be absorbed into your bloodstream and then metabolized by your liver where it cleaves off the ester and then what's left behind is the bioidentical testosterone molecule which is available to be used by the body. The second benefit of uh, sub-Q injections is that there's a lot less concern for scar tissue buildup. Um, when you're injecting intramuscularly, especially over years or if you're using a large ga gauge needle, you can get the muscular scar tissue. Um, which can make it very painful to inject because you have to literally puncture through scar tissue. So not pleasant. Um, the third benefit of doing sub-Q injections is that it's a lot less intimidating and all around easier to do than IM injections. Some people will disagree with that, but personally, like if you're just starting out on testosterone replacement, the idea of like putting a one and a half inch harpoon, which you don't need to use by the way, use the insulin pen, in my opinion, but a one and a half inch harpoon that they got the, from the pharmacy and injecting that into their delt is fucking horrifying. You know, I've heard people like literally almost crying because they can't handle it. So sub Q is a lot less just psychologically intimidating. Um, and that's a huge benefit when you're first starting out. Now, the only drawback to sub Q that I can really find or, or think of is that some people, including myself, will develop an itchy, irritating lump under the skin that takes many days to dissipate. And uh, this can be really annoying because you have this inchy lump everywhere you inject, even when you're rotating injection sites. You would do your hip, you do your other hip, you do your belly, the other side of the belly, and then you get to the side of the hip again and you still have that lump there. It's like, Jesus Christ, is this shit even absorbing? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it sits there for a long period of time. It's irritating. It's itchy. It's uncomfortable. Uh, it's just not, you don't want to have lumps on your body all the time, right? Uh, so I had that problem and that's why I switched to intramuscular injections. That's the biggest main drawback to sub-Q injections. Now switching to intramuscular, the biggest benefit is that it's tried and true. Uh, testosterone was originally intended for intramuscular use only, and we have plenty of research verifying the safety and efficacy of this method. 
Um, it's been, you know, used uh, in this way for many decades, and um, we know how it works. And we know, secondly, leading into the second benefit, we know that what we know the rate of absorption. It's clearly understood. It makes it feasible to predict when your levels are going to peak and when they're going to reach steady state because we know it's half life. So, for example, the half life of testosterone cypionate is around seven days. Um, it takes about five and a half half lives for a drug to reach steady state if you do consistent dosing. So if you consistently inject for, you know, five weeks-ish, you're going to be a steady state. And then you get labs drawn and you know you know where you're at on that dose, right? But if you're injecting subcutaneous, uh, there's no data on how long that prolongs the half-life. You know, we don't even technically know if it prolongs the half-life, although um, there's a lot of anecdotal evidence or anecdotal reports that it uh, absorbs much slower. But we don't know exactly when your levels are going to reach steady state when you're doing subcutaneous injections, which makes it hard to interpret labs. Because you don't know when your peak is, um, you don't know when your steady state, uh, you, you just don't know when to grab labs, basically. We know when you're injecting intramuscularly, uh, when to grab labs when your peak trough and steady state levels are. So it makes it easier to interpret labs when you're injecting IM. It's my opinion. Drawbacks to intramuscular injections are that they can be more painful and it requires rotation of injection sites so you don't build up scar tissue, particularly if you're using large gauge needles. But it can still happen with uh, insulin pins, especially if you're not rotating enough. If you're just doing delts with insulin pins, um, I did that for a while and then literally today I did an injection in my delt and I like hit a wall of scar tissue. I was like, I had to go through it. I was like, oh fuck really hurt um so that was with an insulin pin uh so i was being lazy and i was just doing my delts and uh now i've got a little bit of scar tissue there so i gotta focus on rotating so i'll do delt delt lat lat ventro glute ventro glute um so now i've got six sites to rotate because i i got lazy and i shouldn't have but um there's that risk of scar tissue buildup in your muscle and uh makes it harder to inject and i don't know if that can lead to atrophy over time of the muscle but it's possible not sure uh, but potentially. Now, a very big, this is what I referenced to at the beginning of this video, something to really know is when if you start out on one injection method and you don't tolerate it for whatever reason weeks down the line and you switch to a different injection method, so let's say you start out on sub-Q and then you switch to intramuscular, because sub-Q has a generally slower rate of absorption, oftentimes intramuscular when switching to intramuscular will raise your total testosterone on labs. So this means if you switch from sub-Q to IM, it's wise to grab labs approximately five weeks after the switch to see if you need to make a dosage adjustment or an adjustment in dosage f frequency. Um, same thing if you're switching from IM to sub-Q. I'll, I'll read plenty of reports of people switching from IM to sub-Q and they feel like they've crashed. And that's because the slower absorption, right, because the oil on oil mix and the absorption is much slower, um, leads to a lower total testosterone. Um, so they feel like they crash. They feel better on IM, right? Uh, but that's not necessarily true. They could probably feel just as good on sub-Q. They may just need a tweak to their dosage or injection frequency. Um, so there's no clinical research to back up these claims, but many TRT users have reported that their labs have shown a significantly lower total testosterone when injecting sub-Q in comparison to when injecting intramuscular, even on the same dose and injection frequency. So because of the reported risk of lab discrepancies, I recommend picking an injection method and being consistent with it. And then if you don't tolerate it for whatever reason, switch and then grab labs in approximately five weeks. But remember, we don't know when um, subcutaneous injections reach steady state. You know, it could be around the same time, you know, but it should technically prolong the half-life. So maybe you need to get labs of around eight weeks. If you um, are doing all right on sub-Q and you just switch from intramuscular to not, not having side effects, you don't feel crashed or whatever, I'd recommend waiting a longer period of time, perhaps up to eight weeks before grabbing labs because of that purported uh, slower rate of absorption. So, that's benefits and drawbacks to intramuscular and sub-Q. Briefly going over it again, sub-Q benefits, slower absorption might lead to more stable hormonal levels across the week, less scar tissue buildup, it's less intimidating. The drawbacks are you can get an irritating lump, which takes days or over a week to dissipate. 
Um, IM injection benefits, it's tried and true. Rate of absorption is clearly understood. Drawbacks, more painful, you gotta rotate injection sites frequently. And remember to grab lab values after you make a change from one administration method to the other because you don't wanna switch and then not grab labs and now you're having side effects or you feel crashed or whatever and you don't have any idea why, well, you haven't checked your labs. So go get your labs done because um, oftentimes people will have a difference in lab values on each injection method, not with everybody, but I see it frequently. So that is the scoop on IM versus sub Q. I hope that information helps you make a good decision uh, on where to start. You can always switch if you don't tolerate one or the other. Um, just make sure to grab labs to make sure there's not been a change in your total testosterone or other hormonal values. Um, and if there has been, make an adjustment in your dosage and injection frequency if needed. Okay, that's it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.